Power Podcasters, Changing the Way the World Communicates, starring Scott Patton, the Dean of Blogonomics and Podology. Scott has been podcasting since 2005, and over 5,000 entrepreneurs just like you have benefited from his extensive knowledge, deep experience, and heart-based coaching. Confused about online marketing, SEO, PPC, SEM, or other obscure letters of the alphabet? Each week in plain English, Scott and his guests share proven strategies guaranteed to ignite your creative juices and get your business moving forward at warp speed. We attribute the success of our podcast to our commitment to excellence and our commitment to you, our valued listeners. So tune in each week as we explore podcasting, internet marketing, and the unweb with Scott Patton at www.powerpodcasters.com. Dot com. Now strap in, mute your ringer, and get ready to shoot for the stars, because here's Scott. Welcome, everybody. This is Scott Patton, the Dean of Blogonomics and Podology. I'm happy to have you with us today, and I'm super excited because we've got a very, very special guest. I know you're going to love him. I've taken his courses, and they are outstanding. He's in the one million sale, dollar sales club. He's a serial entrepreneur. I love that because I am too. And of course, he's a Udemy, Udemy instructor. He's always been an entrepreneur. In fact, at 15, he took over his first small business. It was a bee extermination service from one of his uncles. And uh, where were you when the bee bit uh, stung me? That's what I want to ask him <laughs> today. So in college, he took $600 of leftover student loan money or student aid money and his credit card, and he started a DJ company, which made me even more jealous because I have no musical skills at all, and being a DJ would have been so much fun. And I don't, you know, we all get rejection, and the question is, what do you do with the rejection? So he, you know, went for an, on a dozen job interviews because, like, as a good college student graduate, he went to get a job, right? And a dozen companies said, nah, sorry, which was a huge mistake for them. And so he took his, his DJ company and turned it into one of the largest DJ services in the upper Midwest. So he started and owned over six small businesses, and he sold millions of dollars in products and services, and has over 25 years of small business experience. And he never had a summer job for regular employment, or had more than a summer job for regular employment. And he loves helping small businesses. So I want to welcome to the show Tom Kennemore. Hey, Tom, how are you doing? I'm doing great. Thank you, Scott, for having me on your show. This is really exciting for me because entrepreneurship is my passion, and I love talking about it and sharing with anybody that has an interest in starting a business. And uh, when Udemy came along and it was just a tremendous opportunity to share uh, an unlimited amount of course ideas and I've only got two up there right now but I have a lot more ideas and uh, it's again really great to be on your show and happy to to talk about how people can start businesses and make their dreams happen. Well I'm in some ways the opposite of you because I spent 20 years at a major grocery chain and uh, ran stores with 300 employees and uh, it was amazing the amount of stress and it was amazing how little entrepreneurship there was in the organization uh, it, at all levels. And I remember being in one store in a kind of a backwoods area and the company had taken over, actually had bought in the store and the people that shopped at the store shopped at the store because they didn't like the company that I worked for. It was a competitor. And so everything we did cost us about $10,000 a week in sales. We put a brand new deli in, sales dropped $10,000. We washed the floor, sales dropped $10,000. We took the bleach and put it in a, an aisle away from the flour and the sugar, sales dropped $10,000. And I was at a Chamber of Commerce meeting, and this lady was sitting beside me, and she was, you know, what do you do? And I told her I worked at this company. She said, well, you need to talk to my, my, my husband. And he didn't want to talk to me at all, but she forced him to move over and sit beside me. And he's, he um, did tree planting. So he had this crew that would go out and they would, after someone, you know, chopped down all the trees in the area, they would plant new trees. And, of course, he had to feed them. And he had real problems with his wholesaler. And I'm a retail grocer. And so we talked about it. And I thought, well, I'm losing sales. 
you know, we have a wholesale division. It's a province over. I'm, I was up in Canada and BC at the time. And let's just, so I talked to my boss. I talked to the warehouse, and they do one shipment a week to this way. The rest goes the other way. But I could get big bags of flour and big bags of salt, and big bags of whatever he needed. And so we did that. And it was a bit of work for you know, putting together these orders and everything else, and there was not a lot of profit in it. But one of my assistant managers said, you know, I don't understand why you're doing this because I know the profit's not that great. And, and I said to him, well, the sales means I can keep one more full-time employee instead of making him part-time. And he just, like, he'd never heard anyone thinking, you know, no, none of his managerial bosses had ever had any concern for the welfare of anybody in the store. It was just, you know, check people out, bag their groceries, fill the shelves, and, you know, go home sort of thing. And, uh, and it just struck me as, like, how inhuman these organizations can be. And that's one of the things I like about being an entrepreneur is it's actually the opposite of that. Yeah, I... I don't have any experience in the corporate world. I, I can't relate to that, but I can't imagine doing anything else other than, you know, building a business and working with other people that want to build businesses. And like the course that we're talking about today, it's about how do people formulate an idea, a business idea that they can start. And I don't think there's any shortage of ideas. I think it's it's narrowing down the ideas because there are so many courses, books, audios, videos on how to make money, and yet people can do that, but what if they don't love it? What if they don't enjoy it? And, you know, how much fun is that going to be if they really don't like it? So right. if, if they can marry their passion with something that can make money, then they have the ability to get through the hurdles that come because there isn't any business without hurdles, lots of hurdles, and they can do it longer. You know, instead of maybe I can, like for example, I tried stock market investing uh, maybe 10 years ago, options and stuff like that, shorts and puts and all that kind of stuff, and I hated it. It was not fun. I made a little bit of money, but it was just not fun. So I stopped doing it. It just was not a side business that I would like to do. So for other people, they love that stuff. So, you know, as an example. Right, right. So you talked about passion. Like, How do you help people identify their passion? Well... In my course, we've got a number of different questions, and some of them kind of ask the same thing, just a little bit different. Uh, like, what do people tell them that they do well that mm. comes really easy to them? Um, maybe they love book work, for example. You know, maybe they love bookkeeping, and where a huge majority of us really dislike that. And, the, but uh, amazing, there are people out there that love it. They love doing that, that kind of work. And so maybe, well, there is a number of different business opportunities just around keeping books. You know, people have started some different internet companies about having someone do your books, your business books for $99 a month. And so there are just so many different, ways to turn your passion, what you really enjoy doing, into a business instead of having that idea that uh, I'm just going to look for the next fad, you know, like, ooh, I hear a lot of people are making money, uh, maybe uh, pick, the, pick the newest thing right now, um, you know, selling on eBay, you know, or Amazon. And so I want to do that business, and but a lot of people try it, and then they stop doing it. Where are all those eBay stores that popped up and then disappeared? So um, I think it's really about people taking the time, and it doesn't have to be a lot of time, but really writing down, journaling, taking notes about uh, what they enjoy doing, 
and what they're good at, and then is there a market for that? Is there a right. way to bring that to the market in a cost-effective way? And so you're looking at you're looking at demand. You're looking at so my interest is there demand for it? Is there a market for it? Like there can be a demand for it, but nobody wants to pay because they can get all the information they want free, right? Right. So Wikipedia or something like that. Um, and I guess how much is uh, pain is involved would be another. As like as you were talking, Tom, I was thinking back to my days ten years ago when I worked with the Internet Marketing Center in Vancouver, and we had a mentoring program where we asked people. Well, basically, we took people from whatever their idea was to an online business, and we kind of modeled everything after what Corey Rubel had done to to create his his success online, and that was he was the starter of the Internet Marketing Center, and. It was kind of interesting because one of the keys was doing keyword research, and then we, we end up using that as a reason not to get into. So it was kind of like, and I want to get your in input on this because I think we really did a disservice to people. It was like, I'm really interested in uh, scrapbooking, so I want to do a scrapbooking thing, blah, blah, blah. And of course, all of us are looking at scrapbooking, right? Because we're not the market, so obviously, right away, we have a bit of negative judgment on it. But then we go in and we do the search on Google and all the, you know, overture keyword stuff and it comes out and it's like, yeah, like there's like 18 people, you know, looking for information on scrapbooking online, right? So, you know, so then we would convince them to go do something else, which usually wasn't something that they had any passion in. And of course, using scrapbooking as the example, it's massive online today, so we were totally wrong to have told those people not to. But, uh, but it, it's, you know, it's kind of like when you look at what's going on online, sometimes it's not going to be um, supporting your your business in terms of the research because there's not a lot of people going on about it. But just because it's not online doesn't mean it can't be offline. doesn't mean that you can't grow that business online even if you can create, I guess what I'm saying is we're in an era where we could actually create demand for stuff, something that nobody knows about so that they can get famous and sell their company for a billion dollars online because they thought of something no one else had thought of. And that's quite a flip from where I was 10 years ago. Right. Well, I think um, a lot of people probably will find success doing something that's already maybe not a brand new idea. I mean, I think it's cool to come up with a totally new idea and you Google it and it doesn't pop up at all. It's like this this market, this this item, this thing, service doesn't even exist. That can be exciting, but I think most people are going to do something that is already, uh, you know, people, it's kind of proven, you know, itself. Maybe it's been out there for a few years. And, uh, you know, I, you, I think you can go either way, but market research, you can go really in-depth and you can spend a lot of time trying to figure out if there's a market or not, or you can simply, you know, with a small budget, maybe a few hundred dollars, you can buy ads on Facebook, you can buy ads on Google, and you can test it really easily to see if if can I can I get some orders? Not really taking orders. If you if you don't have it to sell, don't take the money because you don't want to do that. But can you get them to opt in or do something that makes it to prove the demand of whatever that is you've got? And uh, you, you, you brought know. up Facebook, and I thought that was a great idea. You know, you put you can easily put up a Facebook fan page. Drive a few thousand or ten thousand people to it through Facebook ads, like you said, and if you've got one like after ten thousand people have been to your page, then you know not much demand. But if you've got nine thousand likes after ten thousand people came to your page, then like you're on to something and to go to the next step. So I think that's a really good idea. Right. Yeah, I I think there are it's, there's so many ways people can. Uh, basically make money and uh, I talk about it a little bit that everybody's an entrepreneur anyway I mean people have the idea that when you get a W-2 job uh, I'm not sure what that is in Canada but uh, when you are working as an employee that you are not an entrepreneur 
but really your boss is like a customer you know and so you've got to make your customer your boss happy otherwise you're gonna lose that customer or lose your job so I like to when people they ask themselves well could I be an entrepreneur do, do I have what it takes you know you speaking of tests uh, and googling you could you know Google hundreds or thousands of tests on well these are the qualities you need to have if you want to be an entrepreneur and if you don't have these qualities maybe you shouldn't be one it's like we're we're already in that you, you're all if you are you're already selling your services to your employer so you might as well keep thinking that you're an entrepreneur and not can you do it but what you want to do what do you want to create so I that's why I, I created this particular course I, I, I there's a lot of courses out there there's a lot of information on the internet out there about again the the next or the business to be in the thing to start but it, I wanted to convince people that you don't have to question your entrepreneurship ability you already have that it's just you know how bad do you want it you know what is it gonna take to take some action um, because we're, we all lead really busy lives and it's so easy to put off starting a business for years five ten twenty years people have wanted to start a business and they put it off because they don't take action when you can start a business today you can register your name online and be in business today it's not this big process it takes time to get it right maybe but if you don't take action if you don't start it's never gonna come together and so I'm really hoping in my short course that it convinces people to figure out what they're passionate about and to take action I think and to stop listening to the naysayers uh, if you ask your friends you know should I start a business man they may they may not support you they may say uh, forget about it buddy <laughs> I wouldn't you know you might have a great idea you you were talking about the scrapbooking idea um, you know depending on who you talk to it's a great idea or it's a terrible idea so you have to be the one to decide you know if you should go into business because so many people don't take action don't do don't create the dreams that they want to create because they're trying to please their parents they're trying to please their friends they want to be accepted and you know acceptance by your friends and family isn't going to get you your dreams you know that's going to get you the same situation so um, as you can see I I can get really going <laughs> about this so that's great that's great <laughs> and, and I was thinking too you know as you were talking <clears throat> there's a step before becoming an entrepreneur and you sort of touched on it and that is <clears throat> what sort of life do you want you know because I think a lot of people they get into well I'm not happy with this life that I have so I want to do something different been working for 20 years for a company or I'm thinking about working for a company or wherever they are in that area and then it's like well I'm gonna quit my job I'm gonna become an entrepreneur or I'm gonna not quit my job I'm gonna become an entrepreneur start a side business and hopefully that goes and I'll take over <clears throat> but I think one of the like I have a friend who's who sells uh, health, alternative health foods and supplements and that sort of stuff and does really really well but he has a problem and his problem is is that he's stuck answering the phone for 12 hours his phone rings off the hook he gives people advice they go buy some of his products and he can't get away and then I'm calling him to talk to about some project we want to do together in, in his field and in his business and excuse me you know the phone is trying to answer it and we just get interrupted 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 so he's in his business not working on his business the tail is wagging the dog <clears throat> and I don't think he ever ever thought about because he's 65 now when I'm 65 and I don't want to answer the phone because when he started the phone never rang 
he, he built his business up. Now it's ringing off the hook. His wife is answering. He's answering. They're worn out the ground down, and they can't go away for a weekend because this business is so, and they haven't been able to manage the expansion, which is actually what we're, we're doing now. And then he's, and he looks at me, and right now this is, I'm in Hawaii, staying at a friend's place, and it's you know a quarter mile that way to a beach, and it's sunny. It's not raining, pouring, or snowy where I live, which is where what it's like where I live. And he and he just goes like, man, like you just got the world's greatest life. And I go, yeah, I do. And if you talk to somebody I dated uh, ten years ago, I was talking about this life. It's taking me a long time to build it. It's taking me a long well because also I had kids to raise, which is hard to travel around the world for six months with you know, teenagers that want to be with their friends at home, right? So, it was a, it was, but I mean, I really looked at what sort of lifestyle I wanted to live, how I wanted to live that lifestyle, and with no clue about how I was going to get there, started building uh, something that, you know, 10 years later, here I am in Hawaii talking to you, and you're in Texas, and and it's all, you know, it's all great. And yet here's my friend who's, Conceivably, you know, I mean, you could look at it and say, well, he's way more successful in his business because he makes way more money per month than I do. <clears throat> he says he's half rich, half poor because the, the money comes in and he buys more inventory, the money goes out. He's just like, well, I don't know how I'm going to eat my, you know, where I'm going to buy my mac and crackers from today or mac and cheese from today because, you know, all the money went out. So uh, I think that's one thing that's really important that people don't think about in terms of like, well, what type of, do I really want to live here? Do I really want to live in a bigger house? Do I really want to live somewhere else? You know, who do I want to have in my life? And, you know, what am I going to do to make sure that I'm healthy when I get there? And, and all of these things. And that's really can be important when it comes to setting up your business. Because if you want to travel the world and your business is lawn care in Southern California or something like that where it's, you have to do it all year round and you're the only person doing it, then you can't take off for a month to go to South America like I did, right? Exactly. I think lifestyle design is huge and uh, I can use my own experience starting my DJ company. <clears throat> I started that business because I loved being a DJ. It was like the most fun business I could think of and then I just started growing it. We doubled in size for four straight years, went from one DJ set up to two in, in the next year. The next year we went to four DJ setups, the next year we went to eight DJ setups, and then the next year we went to 16 DJ setups. And uh, at one point I was working with over 50 different disc jockeys and I created this really good sized for a small business it was it was big in this particular industry and I was pulling my hair out and uh, it was very stressful it it got too big yeah long 60 70 hour weeks and it it I had to adjust that I had to all right I I can't work seven days a week, week after week. You know, that that wasn't the lifestyle I wanted. I had young kids at the time. And so I don't remember what made me shift, but I started to shift uh, to employees and having more other people, starting to leverage other people rather than ha doing all the work myself. And eventually downsized the business uh, significantly cut the business to, about in uh, to one third of what it used to be, raised our prices, and actually started having more fun and making more money. And I actually I wasn't even doing the events myself. I would uh, have the the DJs take care of that, take the weekends off myself, and actually speaking of taking trips, I took a number of trips that were weeks long while the business took care of itself you know with a manager and uh, so I think uh, that example you used uh, of your friend and you know that that sounds like something where yeah you, you have to look at how could this be changed or adapted you know to possibly 
yeah, what good is maybe a s substantial monthly income if you don't have the time to enjoy that? Uh, so, it, 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 yeah, you really have to decide. I mean, and some people love working that hard, and they don't really like to travel or take time off. So for other people, not me, but for other people, that kind of that kind of work might be fun. <laughs> so that's right. <laughs> but I th and I think you're right. I think it's everybody, and it comes back to the passion, right? You just what are people passionate about? He's he's passionate about people's health, but then it's how do you put that together, and how do you let go of, of all parts of it, right? Because he it was just him and his wife, and they know every intimate detail of their business. And it's really hard to let them to get them to let go. And it was, sounds like you didn't have that problem. And you had the same situation: sixty hours, eighty hours, ninety hours, weeks, <clears throat> huge growth, and uh, you know, no time. But you were able to find some people that could manage it and get the employees on. And and that's part of the problem that that he's come across, I think. Yeah, I I did hang on to it at first. Oh, hang on just a second. Sure. Someone's at the door. <clears throat> well, I was thinking I was going to have to cut this out, but I don't think I will. <laughs> in Hawaii, the guy next door knocks on the door in the middle of the hangout and says, I got these oranges. There might be a lot of pits in them, but you know what? Have some. So, Tom, That's I'll have awesome. one for you, and I'll let you know how they were. <laughs> yeah, just ship and, it over to me. <laughs> And he says, you know, it's a nice day out there. I'm not sure what you could hear, but it's a nice day out there. Like, make sure you get out and enjoy it. It's sunny. Right. <laughs> exactly. Let's take this uh, podcast outside, huh? That's right. That's right. <laughs> uh, I was actually thinking it would be kind of fun to do it off on the beach, but I'm not sure what the sound would be like. Yeah, same here. Um, what I was, I, I think I was starting into uh, when I first hired uh, an employee, the very first employee, uh, a secretary, she had to keep asking me for things to do because I was so used to doing it all myself. And so I think it took a few weeks for me to give her enough things to keep her busy. And that was that, yeah, just hanging on to that control the way I've always done it. And uh, you, yeah, it's 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 definitely a challenge, and uh, uh, so it, I think every entrepreneur that builds their business to a certain point has a similar issue like that, and it's a good challenge to have. It means your business is growing, and yes. and so it is. It's it's a fun thing. I guess the only constant is change, right? Absolutely. Wow. There's a couple of courses worth of material just talking about change right there. Yeah. <laughs> well, maybe we should do that. We'll have a collaboration. <laughs> there you go. So tell us a little bit about your course. It's um, Entrepreneurs Go From Passion to Business Idea to Launch. Uh, it's been around since I think October of 2014. You've got uh, tons of uh, five-star reviews. I I took the course. I thought it was fantastic. You've got over a thousand students. Um, so tell us just a little bit of an overview of the course, and and then we'll let everybody know where they can go to get it. Sounds great. Well, actually, this is a new course. It's only been out there for I think at this point a couple of weeks. Oh, okay. And, uh, my first course was on online reviews for entrepreneurs. That was the one I released back in uh, October. And uh, this course was going more toward my passion, talking directly about entrepreneurship. And I've got a, an idea for a series of courses and this is like the foundational course, like where would somebody start? Like I want to change my life, I want to do something different, or I want to make a little bit of money on the side, so I need to start a business. Where do I go? What do, what do I do first? Well, you need an idea. You need an idea that fits you and fits your passions and fits your lifestyle, and how do you go about doing that? 
and I wanted to uh, I wanted to do it in a way that got people to to think quickly. So all the all the tests or questions are timed. You you have two minutes to answer them. Uh, you you could spend hours thinking about this, but if you have a couple of minutes and you know you've got to answer the question, your your answer is going to be just as good as if you had contemplated it for a long time. And so we go through a series of tests throughout the course. Uh, they are not that bad, but you're going to have a headache when you're done because. I ask a lot of the similar questions in a different way because I really want to boil down to just maybe two or three at the most ideas that that fit all of the possibilities for that particular person for a business. And I, I know that there are uh, part of the reason people are not starting their business is they can't decide what to start. They've got, again, hundreds of ideas that they could do that they've heard their friends talk about, oh, get into this thing or that thing over there. They're making a lot of money, um, you know, but just because they're making money doesn't mean that's the right business for them. Like your friend, uh, for example, must be very passionate about health food and supplements, right? That's right. Oh, for sure. Right. Now, for me, I, I couldn't see myself doing that. The 60, 70 hours a week selling health food supplements, that, that just, I wouldn't have the passion to do that. But that's where that passion comes in, you know, that you need to have that in order to get through the rough spots in starting a business because, you are gonna have challenges I mean and you expect a certain amount of challenges well most likely people starting a business are gonna have more challenges than they even think are possible to have and that's just the way it goes because we talked about change things are changing technology and it doesn't all mesh together like it should before we started, I was having trouble with my uh, getting my uh, Google to fire up and, and do a Hangout. I was a little bit worried we, w we weren't going to be able to do this <laughs> because my computer wasn't working quite right, but it thankfully it came together. So there's this constant change, and I think that leads into something else where people think I, more more knowledge is the key. Like if I keep learning then that's the key and knowledge is great to a point but if you are always learning and never launching then you're not taking action and you're not starting your business so one of the things I do and it's not counter education because I think knowledge is so important but you need to do it while you're launching I, I tell people you know there are thousands of courses on Udemy but after my course why don't you pick like five more courses something on marketing and sales and bookkeeping and actually producing your product and service uh, and then launch because you're not gonna know everything if you think you're gonna know everything about running your business at the time you start it it's not gonna happen you have to launch to complete your training so to speak and so it's that paralysis by analysis yeah. uh, people, people that let's say I've, I've read or taken hundreds of courses on being an entrepreneur you may have taken so many courses and heard about all the business failures and how you know only nine out of ten businesses actually make it you know for ten years it can be counterproductive. You could actually outsmart yourself into starting a business because the risks now are too high. And I mean, Scott, you've talked to other entrepreneurs. How many of them said, I didn't have a clue what I was doing when I started? Yeah, I mean, pretty much all of us. 
that's the common theme, you know, among entrepreneurs. And so many of the people out there, I think, want to learn it before they do it. And it, 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 it happens at the same time, basically. So, uh, and the other thing, this is going to be a new course of mine, but I'll just quickly touch on it, why, why I'm so sure. passionate about this. There are there's some studies out there about how the younger generation, uh, the 20s and 30-year-olds coming out now, are less entrepreneurial than people our age. Hmm. Okay. And so for some reason, the schooling or the culture or whatever it is, we're not bringing up some of the younger people to be as interested in starting their own business. And I don't, I can't quote the study, but that's kind of, that's my real passion. I love entrepreneurship, but I really love talking to younger people about taking an entrepreneurial path rather than I want to go to college and then immediately get a great job that pays really well and that's going to be my life and so I believe my next course is going to be on young entrepreneurship or starting your business while you're still in college because that's the perfect place to start a business when you think about it while you're still in school you don't have a lot of bills you've got access to all this great technology at your school you've got lots of friends around that can probably help you for beer and pizza so anyway that that's a, a, mostly about the course we're talking about today and how if you really want to have a business you can and you don't have to study it for months and years you can you can find something you can start it now and it doesn't have to be the end all be all but you do need to start something if you're going to be an entrepreneur yeah I agree I like using sports analogy and I was thinking as you were talking it's like you're at the plate <clears throat> You can swing and you can miss. You can swing and you can miss. You can not swing. You can swing and hit a base hit. You can then eventually you're going to get good enough that sometimes when you swing you hit a home run. Yeah, but if you're not up at the plate swinging, nothing's going to happen. Absolutely. And the likelihood is that whatever someone starts now for a business, that's not going to be the same thing they're doing in five or ten years. It's very likely that it will change. It, it could fail completely, but maybe you'll get kind of pulled into another direction, maybe a different product line, a different service. And, but it's kind of, if you don't start, you don't, those opportunities don't show up. I like to talk about you, opportunities come to those in motion, but you have to be in motion for, to see those opportunities, if you're just stuck at your job or whatever you're doing and not making choices and taking actions, then your life's not going to change because you're not doing anything different. Right. Yeah, no, I totally agree. <clears throat> it's You never know when you're doing, let's say it's your fifth business that becomes the one that makes you a multimillionaire or something, and when you're in your first business right now, you don't know that the connection that you made from those people in your first business aren't going to lead to something five years down the road that just opens up a whole new world that who knew, right? And uh, exactly. Yeah, I'm I'm here in Hawaii today, um, staying for free because I made a trip uh, from one province of, in Canada to another to talk for free to a group of people. Uh, and that and developed that relationship with this person and now eight years later we we're doing all sorts of different businesses together and it wouldn't have happened if I hadn't have said sure I'd be happy to come and help you out so uh, I totally agree with what it is that you're saying Tom and I want to thank you very much for taking time out of your busy day and and uh, I know you want to be out in the in the sun in Texas there just like <laughs> I want to be out in the sun in Hawaii here and, absolutely <laughs> um, 
So what we're going to do is we're going to uh, post somewhere a, uh, a link that you can go, and uh, Tom's been gracious enough to give us a discount. And um, I don't want to say what it is or what the price is because <clears throat> usually the way it works with Udemy, there's a limited number of, dis of uh, coupons, and we may run out. And if we run out a uh, year from now, the price of the course might be different, and then the coupon could be different as well. So uh, just look for it here or look for it in the description and uh, go take the course. It's an awesome course. I've taken it, and it, it helped me a lot to rekindle a little bit of passion and gave me some ideas for some things that... Uh, I hadn't thought about doing because of the passion that I have for different entrepreneurial things that I want to do. So thank you very much, Tom, and uh, thank you, everyone, for joining us, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you very much, Scott.